Welcome to the Desert Sanctuary with Carl and Laura Forehand. Often when we have doubts about religion, or we want to be contemplative, or simply ask questions, it can feel like we are wandering out into the desert. We would like to welcome you to our sanctuary, the Desert Sanctuary. We've tried to pick guests that resonate with our fellow friends and seekers here in the desert. Our hope is that you will find life for your body, soul, and spirit. And now, here is our show. Hi, welcome to the Desert Sanctuary. I'm Laura Forehand. We are grateful that you are here with us today. I'm here with Carl Forehand. I don't know why I always have to say your last name. I don't know what other Carl I would be with, but... Anyway, so we are here, and it's just the two of us today. So most Carls are about the same, I guess. We're, we're but yours is with similar. a K, so we have to make sure we clarify. But it's just the two of us today, so we're just gonna kind of talk over some things and kind of do an intro for our next series that we're really excited about. Yeah. It- it has to do with moving forward, and we'll talk about that in a little bit, but um, just lots of good stuff going on in our life right now, I think. Okay. You know, we're learning to heal. I think this this recent series that we did called Things We Don't Understand mm-hmm. was pretty beneficial, at least for me. It was. One of the biggest things was that while I was in Christianity, I had a lot of irrational fears about things I didn't understand Mm -hmm. and so now that we were you know been out in the quote-unquote desert for a while and have experienced some things and learned some things and gone through some things healed Mm -hmm. things many different but we wanted to look at some of those things we just we don't understand I mean I, I may or may not want to do tarot but unless I understand it, you know, right. and know what it is, how can I say that I don't want to do it? Uh-huh. Just because someone at some point in my journey said, well, be careful about that stuff. And when you say, and now I'm apt to say, why should I be afraid of it? Well, you know, you just don't know. It's just real scary, you know, mm-hmm. and it's dangerous. So be careful out there, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Right. And, you know, if I'm, the analogy of the desert, if I'm walking around in the desert there's some things i should be aware of right and mm-hmm. so the more i know about snakes and lizards and what they do probably very few lizards that could hurt me but they still might creep me out right it's it's an irrational right. fear mm-hmm. not necessarily based on do they have venom um have they ever killed anybody before have they ever attacked someone mm-hmm. you know things like that but it's i think it's a terrible place to be to be <clears throat> You know, inside of a group, and and the only real safety we have or comfort we have is just staying inward. You know, and everything yeah. out there is bad. We're and all dangerous. afraid of the same thing. Yeah, and so and really, it's we're afraid of things that we don't understand, like right. you were saying, things we've never experienced before, things that we've never really questioned. We just kind of have taken it at face value that it's scary oh simply because we don't understand it Mm -hmm. and and to go with that it's like you're not encouraged really to ask questions so you can't really there's no way to alleviate alleviate those fears Mm -hmm. by asking questions and if you do ask questions like well why do i need to be afraid of it well you just do I yeah, mean, you might be, you know, they bring, the de- they bring the devil into it and things mm. like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. So I do, I agree with you that, you know, this most recent series has been beneficial. There's still a lot of things that I don't understand, but there's mm-hmm. definitely not a fear yeah. behind it like there used to be. Yeah. The um, One of the most interesting things I... I wanted to interview a Satanist, and I didn't get. We didn't find one, mm-hmm. <laughs> or they just weren't interested. You know, some, right? Most 
most other groups are not as evangelistic as evangelicals are. Mm -hmm. Um, But we didn't really find one. But, you know, I started looking at, because I saw, one time I saw on a news program, I saw um, the headline was that the Satanists were protesting something. They were on the like the second floor of a rotunda in a mm-hmm. capital, mm-hmm. and the the Satanists were were sitting um, peacefully protesting something. They might have had a couple of signs, mm-hmm. but on the other side was someone preaching at them and condemning them, and it was, of course probably a Baptist preacher, you know, mm. but it was of the evangelical flavor. Mm-hmm. And the person that looked foolish was the preacher. Yeah. Um, because he wasn't seeking to understand their point, having conversation with them, he was yelling at them. Mm-hmm. And they were peacefully protesting a political something. I don't even know what they were protesting. Right. But, um, you know, that's kind of the way we operate. So I looked into... Uh, Satanist tenets. There's kind of two schools, and um, in the episode with Aaron Tomlinson, we talked about that a little bit. But there's two. There's the Church of Satan, and there's the Satanic Temple. And the Satanic Temple. I looked at their temp- uh, tenants. Tenants, mm-hmm. and they were, you know, could have just as easily been in the New Testament. You right. know, along with right. the Sermon on the Mount. Mm-hmm. There are they good things about being good. Mm-hmm. And the point I'm trying to get to is all of that research and looking into that stuff um, kind of convinced me that the people that are most obsessed with a, a, a being called mm-hmm. Satan mm-hmm. Um, is Christians. Yeah. <laughs> and and they've, they've kind of constructed this with history and myths and... Uh, fairy tales and so on, but neither one of the satanic temple groups believe in an actual Satan. Mm-hmm. They don't worship Satan. Mm-hmm. They don't believe he's really an actual being. Mm-hmm. Um, it's mainly just an idea of the adversary, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what it was in the first century as well. You know, we are, we're, we're the other side, you know, we want to present the other side of politics and things about society and so on. So mm-hmm. um, I think just by looking into him, when we first got started on this journey, you know, yoga was the devil, right? <laughs> and nobody knew why. They were quoting a Baptist guy that read a book, read one book mm-hmm. <laughs> other than the mm-hmm. Bible, and just determined that anything that smelled like New Age was wrong. Right. And... I'm going to lead you down the path. Be afraid. I don't know why, but be afraid of it. Uh huh. <laughs> well, and that uncertainty, right? I don't mm-hmm. know why. You know, right. that uncertainty, I think, just fuels that fear. Yeah. But here's the interesting thing. I mean, I really do wish we could have had a Satanist or mm-hmm. someone from, you know, the Satanic Temple or something come on. Um, only because, like, my biggest question is why call it the Church of Satan or why call it? satanic temple Mm -hmm. if that's not like an entity that you're worshiping that's just my biggest question like and that's not a judgment i'm just really really curious about it but here's what i do know is that since we we started you know talking about those things that we don't understand you know tarot cards and oracle cards and you know witchcraft and all that kind of stuff the, what the church, you know, back in the day had warned us about, you know, that it's all going to open some sort of portal to, you know, demons. And, you know, that is, that couldn't be farther from the truth for me. Right. Like, I don't feel like we've opened. And which is funny, too, because I just think for as much as the church, um, you know, talks about how almighty and all-powerful God is, it sure is easy for us to, you know, do things like, you know, open a gateway or whatever for, Mm -hmm. you know, things that God can't control. I mean, that's just strange. And also, I also feel like when, when Christians talk about things like opening 
you know, a portal or a gateway for demonic entities to come in. I'm like, that sounds an awful lot like witchcraft. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I just, I feel like if if Christians could, like, sit down and have actual, like, unemotional conversations with people like we did, mm-hmm. then I think you would really see that there's a lot of things in Christianity that mirror the occult. Really, mm-hmm. they, it does. Yeah, it's not that hard to find. I mean... You go back to the time of Daniel, mm-hmm. you know, and Daniel basically interpreting dreams and, mm-hmm. and, and all those things. Um, very, very similar. But then, yeah. of course, the Bible contradicts itself and it uh, condemns sorcery, condemns mm-hmm. con- in, in divination, even though it was honoring divination in, in different parts. And, and a lot of the stuff we do is very similar to what other people do with mm-hmm. other practices, you know, what you know, if we would pray. You know, I've known Christians that pray for other people's demise. Exactly. You know, well, we see that on the news. It is not something that yeah. you know. We talk about going to your prayer closet. I'm like, not yeah. lately. Not in our society lately. So the real, real question is, tends to be like, okay, how is that? Any different than uh, any like, different yeah. than casting spells, spell, right? You know, um, it's not. It's not, and you know, l- most groups are not trying to recruit you. They're not trying mm-hmm. to proselytize you, mm-hmm. and they're, a lot of times they share information with you about what they do, and usually it's presented like that. But I think when we can, the first time it happened for me was in the tea shop mm-hmm. when I kind of stepped out. And said, okay, this is different. Everything's different. And it's so different that I can't mount a defense. I can't be afraid. I don't know what to be afraid of, you know. Mm -hmm. And then when I was present and real, um, I got the good out of that interaction with with a guy that was a Buddhist, I'm sure. Um, Couldn't speak the same language, but still one of the most meaningful times in my life. And Mm -hmm. a lot of these interviews that we did over the past month or month and a half with people, I'm going to remember that kind of like I remember the tea shop. Mm, that mm-hmm. that was, you know, I saw the humanity in that person. I mm-hmm. didn't see the demon, the quote unquote right. demon. <laughs> right. And um, there was there was no uh, evil intent. You know, mm-hmm. uh, all the things we make up. You know. Yep. It's just, you know, we should. Um, take each person individually each issue individually and uh why not explore it what do you have to be afraid of if god is if you believe that god is omni all powerful Mm -hmm. always present Mm -hmm. you know all of those things like you said this in the beginning all those things we claim if if that's true then what do i have to be afraid of right and the bible even says who should i fear Mm. right do you think that maybe like Christians take the whole, you know, Jesus on the cross and how God turned his face away because of, I mean, this is a story that I, this is how I understood the story. Like, you know, Jesus on the cross, there was like so much sin on him from the world that God couldn't even look at him. I mean, yeah. do you think that's maybe what well, just- Christians are thinking that? Well, if I invite, I'm using air quotes, sin mm-hmm. into my life, then God's going to turn his face. Yeah. Well, well, just, you know, go back to Parent Faith, the book, you know, mm-hmm. comparing to parenthood. You know, what situation would your child have to be in that you wouldn't go there with them? Okay. You, I, I understand that, and I'm going to throw a wrench in that because, right. like, we... Like, we watch Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race, and we have seen the trauma that a lot of these drag queens, and and we've known kids that are coming out as trans or homosexual or whatever, and we've seen, you know, how parents turn away from their children. Based on their their misguided belief that God does that. I guess. That yeah. if, you know, if God's real, if he's what we say he is, mm-hmm. he shouldn't be turning his back on 
people. He, true. If we're his children, mm-hmm. if that, if all that's true, then he would go anywhere. Right. You know, and you're, you know, you're, you're selling confusing doctrines. For you sure. know that God goes after the lost sheep, but He turns His back right. on us. If that's if so we're true. if we're lost in a certain situation, mm-hmm. He's going to give up. Right. Right. And right. that's not a that's not how a parent acts. Not how a parent should act. Right. A good parent would would go anywhere mm-hmm. if their their child, you know, hey, I'm in trouble. You know. And on the same note, you know, we have seen that, like, watching RuPaul's Drag Race and, you know, like, at the finale. Sorry, you guys, I'm, like, totally into this show. Yeah. But in the You're finale, you know, girl. they say, who is, who's here supporting you? And a lot of times it is their parents. Mm-hmm. And their parents are just like, I mean, it's just amazing to see the love and they're not looking at, you know, that their child is doing something weird or whatever. I mean, they just accept their their yeah. child, their son, typically, for who they cho- choose to be. Yeah, one of the people. And how they choose to express one it. One of the people we interviewed was Susan Cottrell for, with Freed Hearts mm-hmm. um, when her daughter came out as gay, uh, the church kind of asked them to decide between their daughter mm. and their faith, and they chose mm-hmm. their daughter. And they have a thriving yeah. Uh, yeah. advocacy yeah. for for the gay community. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's. I, I hope some of those, those lines uh, are being cleared up right. for the future. And most of it has to do with Okay, I don't need to be afraid of this. I need to I need to learn more. I need to meet some people mm-hmm. uh, in that situation. That's what we tried to do with the series. We we talked to a witch. We talked to a, uh, several mediums, mm-hmm. different kinds of mediums, and things like that, and got a pretty pretty kind of broad spectrum of people. Mm-hmm. But there there you know I think sometimes when we paint the second thing I want to talk about. When we go out and, you know, we we don't want to paint a too rosy of a picture like about the desert, you mm-hmm. know, about taking on those challenges of the desert. You know, anything that's growth, that's new, that is a journey is going to have some challenges. What are some that you've thought about? <clears throat> challenges? I mean, for me... Could be the challenges of evolving. Yeah, well, that's what I was gonna gonna kind of say because I feel like there's there's always growing pains. You know, like I do not think that just because I'm in the desert, I've left organized religion, that I've somehow arrived because things, um, even through these last few weeks, come up. You know. Mm Um, so there's still like layers of the onion, if you want to use that analogy, that are being peeled back that need to be, you know, questioned and healed. So I think for me, you know, the healing that's required is probably always going to be there. I need to learn, though, to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. Because I think when things come up that I've, push down and stuff down and you know never questioned for so long when those things come up it it feels very overwhelming to me mm-hmm. and i feel like i'm never going to be well that's mm-hmm. i i want to use air quotes for that yeah um but the truth is is that you really have to and i always hated it when you said this but you've got to lean into it and I still am not a big fan of that. <laughs> but it's true, though. Nobody like, you have to acknowledge it. And you have to um, really, like, go inside and figure out, like, where that is sitting in your body. And, you know, I, and to, for me, as a teacher, this has been really beneficial. Because, you know, if I'm having, like, if I'm feeling... A traumatic response in my body and I'm feeling tension and stress 
you know, I, I need to like have a moment where I'm kind of asking myself, like, why am I feeling this way? Because mm-hmm. I think it's really easy and I think we've all done it. So <clears throat> I'm not, you know, shaming anyone at all, but we've all done it. We've reacted mm-hmm. because we may be feeling a trauma response. And so we've reacted to people that we love, mm-hmm. um, you know, not meaning to necessarily, but it's because our body is, you know, responding to some sort of traumatic event. So um, I guess I say all that to just say that, you know, that's that's kind of going to, that is going to be something I have to come to a realization that there's always probably going to be some sort of process of healing that's going on. But after I go through that and, you know, don't stuff it down anymore, then I do feel like that kind of, like I can see differently, like all the senses mm-hmm. are just more alive for me. Yeah, the, the buzzword for that is integration now, you know, I, yeah. integrating it back in. But that and, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Instead of, uh, you know, exercising it mm. or whatever, you know, it's, it's still a part of you. You can't get rid of it. Right. You have to integrate it and, mm-hmm. and you have to feel to heal. Mm-hmm. And we're seeing that in from different people, different groups, different ways of approaching trauma. We're seeing them kind of come to a, not really a consensus, but a lot of people are seeing the value of that, mm-hmm. you know, which probably started a hundred years ago with, you know, Carl Jung mm-hmm. and um, all of that anyway. Right. What about you, though? Like, I was, what are some of the challenges? I was thinking, you know, one of the challenges for me is, is trying to find a balance. I drew that card the other day that I, I need balance mm-hmm. because I feel like you and... came from um probably a demon um i um you and i sat kind of at the edge of christianity just to use that desert metaphor and whatever we feel like in some ways we need to i don't want to speak for you but in some ways we feel like we need to advocate for people that are experiencing trauma Mm -hmm. we hear their stories coming out uh, some of them make us sad. Some of them make us angry. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's it's that balance of being an advocate and being just critical, you know, just negative. And people accuse people in the desert sometimes of being bitter. Um, but I think there's, there's a certain amount of speaking truth, mm-hmm. you know, to power and things like that and advocating... Um, helping those that have been hurt, and so that for me, that's a balance. Like you said, with healing, is healing is hard. Mm-hmm. It's hard work, and it it has you know kind of a spiraling upward effect. But you you have to keep dealing with the things you've avoided, and we've right. avoided so much. Yeah, yeah. So that's sure. I mean, healing is required. You know, the freedom that you know, leaving behind organized religion gives us uh, also kind of puts us right at the, you know, clears away the negative, the baggage, but then we got to deal with what we didn't deal with. Mm-hmm. And there's no no avoiding that. There's no way around it. Right. <clears throat> We're also starting to see um, power struggles in the desert already, you know, which um, anytime... Like, can you speak to that? Like, what do you? Yeah, I, mean? I can speak in general because I don't well, want to yeah. talk about anybody no, specifically. No. But I think, I think what what you always want, you know, it, most leaders want influence, you know, and so you, then you start uh, joining together with other groups to, mm-hmm. to have more influence. Mm. And so there's there's a, there's a level that influence is probably important. It's it's necessary to some degree, you know. You don't, you want to have impact. What you do is impactful. Mm-hmm. But I think just like a church, I think it's very easy for it to become like what we experienced in church. You know, where it's all about the organization. It's mm-hmm. all about this group we've gathered together, right. and we're, 
you know, we don't disagree with each other. We don't, we just start mm-hmm. hating other people <laughs> outside. Mm-hmm. So I, I see that proclivity, you know, people, we just know what we know in yeah. Christianity and all of our background. And um, I think, I feel like I'm continually stretching, moving forward, and then maybe kind of withdrawing a little bit and moving to in a different direction. Mm-hmm. I feel like that's always a challenge. Right. I agree. We're trying to do a lot of it through social media and things like that, which has its own limitations and challenges to it. So Yeah. What about lessons learned? Have we learned anything yet? Um, I think I'm I think for sure we've talked a lot about going inside, you know, trusting yourself. Um I'm honestly still learning how to do this. Right. You know, Mm -hmm. like there's still a big part of me that doesn't trust that I will make the right decision. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I guess my question to you is, so then like taking or talking to people, like if I'm struggling with something and then like talking to people about it, I mean, is that necessarily a bad thing? And how do you make sure that in the end... You're listening to your inner voice rather than all the advice that people mm-hmm. gave you about how you should do things, you know? Yeah. I mean, I'm speaking about a really personal experience for me, and you know about it, and I'm not going to share it on the podcast, but, you know, that's that's coming up. Um, mm-hmm. I'm meeting a friend for lunch about it, and so it's like, you know, yes, I want to get all my questions answered, but... Mm-hmm. There's still that fear that, oh, am I just going to get into a situation? Is it just going to be like every other situation I've been in? Does that yeah. make sense? I, th- I think throughout the years, <clears throat> you, you've you always had a strong intuition. And, for, and we've ignored that. <laughs> and maybe you've ignored it and, and I've ignored it. And then so... When we're trying to go inside, we're trying to trust ourselves. We're overcoming so much indoctrination Mm -hmm. about that. You know, Mm -hmm. in religion, you can't trust yourself. Trust us. You know, we know what's going on. Or trust God through the lens of one speaker that speaks to you every week. And there's there's so much indoctrination and so much pattern there that's already been established. Mm -hmm. It's so hard. We're going through a a course right now that'll turn out to be six months, right? Or something Uh like that. And And honestly, I hope, because this is just part one or level one, and I would love to continue on, but we'll see. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, keep going. I I wonder. It is for six months for right now. I wonder just how how many times Carrie is going to have to say to me, you're still in your head. (laughs) You're still in your head. for sure. Yeah. You're still in your head. You know, you're not uh, in touch with your body and feeling Mm it. I did, however, have recently decided to get an actual tarot reading. Mm -hmm. And I had a really, really positive experience Mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. Um, The the cards kind of told a story. Uh, It was also, you know, it resonated. It, It seemed real. It seemed like the what I struggle with, what mm-hmm. I need to admit, you mm-hmm. know, and things like that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was very happy with it. And yeah. How much did you, sh- I couldn't hear because I was like behind you, but how much did you share with her before? Like, she asked you a question like, what do you, what, what do am you? I, what, am, what was I there? Yeah. Yeah, mainly just, just talked about, you know, need to be accepted. Mm-hmm. And I've always struggled with that. And mm-hmm. So she knew that ahead of time but that was just reflected in the advice she gave after she right. she said you got to believe this this is you this is true and mm-hmm. um you need to affirm it and so on but mm-hmm. everything else was you know didn't have anything to do with that it was mm-hmm. about you know uh you're you're successful you already are successful and right you know you're a leader um, this extremely positive mm-hmm. stuff, and it wasn't like 
you know, I mean, uh, of course, before we really learned about tarot and oracle cards and things like that, you know, we always thought that, or I always thought, I'll speak for myself, I always thought that it was like they're going to tell you about the future. Mm -hmm. But really, it was kind of just confirming where you're at right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what that that's the perfect reading that I needed, you mm -hmm. know. I'm what, hoping to get one when we go back. Because <laughs> presence and authenticity are the two biggest parts. Mm -hmm. And basically, she's saying you need you need to be present and mm -hmm. realize these things about yourself mm -hmm. that that you are a leader, that you are successful already. You right. don't have to go anywhere or do anything to get that, you know. And being present and being authentic seemed to be what it was all about. It's pointed out that I'm a learner, that I'm mm -hmm. growing, yet I'm already successful. Yep. Um, I am putting, and there's another part about kind of putting to death the old things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and keeping that foolishness about me, you know, keeping, there was a fool child card, mm -hmm. you know, keeping that adventurous, adventurous yeah. kind of, uh -huh. the next Playful. card was determination mm -hmm. and then um, kind of dealt with the spirit spirits spirit world is mm -hmm. behind me and those kind of things mm -hmm. um it was great yeah you know, it's not it's not like well this is god's word and this is it you know it's right. absolute but it certainly had strong indicators into what i what i should be affirming and mm -hmm. and it helped me you yeah know, it was really positive right and so you're big you know thing that you kind of went in there with was just needing affirmation from others yeah right and so she yeah. was just you don't and the message was you don't have to go anywhere for acceptance right you you are accepted uh -huh. and i think we lose that you know like we we forget about the people that are around us like there's a lot of times like when you're down you know, that I'll say things like, I've always been on your team. You know, and I think we forget about the people that are closest to us and how mm -hmm. they have always been there for us. Yeah. Um, but sometimes we're, for whatever reason, and maybe that's because, you know, in Christianity, we're always looking outside of ourselves. You know, God is out there somewhere. Jesus is out there somewhere. Our spirit is out there somewhere. You know, and we're not sure what we need to do to bring that to us. But all we know is that when life sucks, we can't do anything right to bring that to us. Mm -hmm. And um, so I think it's it's natural that we look outside of ourselves, mm -hmm. you know, for that affirmation. But when we do that so many times, then we forget that really the affirmation that's truly honest and present is really what's inside. Yeah. So we're, we're going to do a new series, right? Yeah. And we're trying to figure out what to call this. The, the most possible title right now is Water in the Desert. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for, uh, we're going to interview people and not have them tell their deconstruction story mm -hmm. necessarily, but talk about going past that. Mm -hmm. you know. And, and now that you're, you've made some progress, mm -hmm. And most of these people we probably will have talked to before, you know, unless you find, usually people kind of appear at the right time right? Um, for interviews and people say, I know this other person and so on. But it is stories, uh, I want to call it success stories of going beyond mm -hmm. uh, religion, going beyond Christianity even. Um, I don't, it's really hard to describe what it is, yeah, I right? Because we don't want to say like, or I don't want to say healing, because I feel like healing in the church is like overused, mm -hmm. and it has a totally, you know, kind of warped, as if as if you're at the end, mm -hmm. right? As if, like, if I'm healed, then I should have no more issues with anything. Like, yeah. I'm good. Yeah. And I, like I said at the beginning, I don't know that that will ever be me. I think there will always be things that, you know, I'm going to have to 
examine and integrate, mm-hmm. if you will, in in myself. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, we're going to be working on that. Probably be taping in April and May. So I'm assuming they'll start coming out in May because mm-hmm. we have a few few kind of odds and ends podcasts to do in April and um, interviews with friends and things like mm-hmm. that. So um, and I maybe think, some of that new series will come out in those odds and ends yeah. podcasts. You never know. Yeah, like you never I'm know sure. what's going to come out. Sure. Well, anything else to say today? No, I just, you know, I'm grateful for this platform and for the people that choose to listen to it and learn from it. And because I just feel like every time we do a podcast, I'm learning for myself. And so I I hope that others are doing the same, you know. Yeah. We have started to put the podcast out on to... Um, YouTube. YouTube. Mm-hmm. So I think we started with 203 and doing random ones for there for a little bit. And then so now we're at 250 or 250 something. Mm-hmm. This one might even be 260 by the time it gets out. Right. And there's at least that many out there on YouTube now. So they're mm-hmm. a little easier to get to. If you want an old episode, you know, from the podcast where it generates, that's it the desert sanctuary.org but that website has some issues you can't share it mm. because facebook hates it and <laughs> i don't know how all that works damn facebook and i would just totally cre- recreate it but i haven't yeah i haven't done that anyway um thanks for joining us today thanks for um your participation in this new series and anytime we interview somebody someone if you like their podcast make sure and tell them mm-hmm. also that that you loved it because sometimes you don't get a lot of feedback from things you do so that's true let people know that you appreciate them that you enjoyed their conversation with us and keep coming back we'll keep trying to do the best we can that's what i tell people all the time they say how you're doing i said i'm doing my best <laughs> right <laughs> that's all you can do that's what we're doing here we want to encourage you as always to be where you are, be who you are, and be at peace. Thank you for joining us today on the Desert Sanctuary. Remember, all that wander in the desert are not lost. We hope that you know you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. <laughs>